Hello once again advanced accounting students. Welcome back. This is another video in our series of accounting for partnerships. As mentioned in an earlier video, this chapter, chapter 9, has 10 learning objectives. We cover all 10. This video is about learning objective 6. How to allocate profits and losses among the partner's capital accounts. So the first thing you have to get clear on is this idea that when we say we're going to allocate profits and losses to partners, we are not talking about handing people cash. That's irrelevant to us. It's up to the partners, to each individual partner, to decide for him or herself when they want to withdraw cash from the business. What we're doing is keeping the balance sheet balanced, that we have figured out the income of the partnership, and to keep the balance sheet balanced, those earnings have to be allocated to individual partners' capital balances. If there's three partners, the total income somehow has to be spread across those three partners. You might think, why not just share everything equally and then everyone will be happy? Some simple partnerships might do that that only have two partners. That's likely not a good strategy. For the same problem you run into in college when there are group projects and everyone in the group is going to get the same grade. So if everyone's getting an equal share, that reduces humans' incentive to put out their best effort. It's called shirking, and it's very common. So what most partnerships try to do is come up with a system to allocate profits that rewards the people who work the hardest or work the longest hours or get the most done and doesn't reward people for shirking. Here's a problem from a different textbook. All the textbooks who have questions about this, they're very similar. You have several in your textbook, so this will give you one additional example. Partners Johnson, Kane, and Lehman agreed to the following provisions for sharing profits or loss from their partnership. Number one, they're each going to be allocated a salary amount. Again, doesn't mean they're being handed that in cash. We're talking about increasing their capital accounts by that amount. It's up to partner Johnson to decide when he or she wants to withdraw assets. Number two, interest on their average capital investment is credited at the rate of 10% per annum, so per year. Number three, any residual profit or loss is shared in a ratio of four to five to one. So you can add that up. 4 plus 5 plus 1 is 10. So Johnson will get 4 tenths, Kane 5 tenths, and Lehman 1 tenth of whatever is left over after you do the first two steps. Number four says all of the provisions above are to be fully implemented. So they're telling you even if one of the first ones makes the partnership income go negative, keep plowing ahead and do all 1, 2, 3. So I've got this on Excel. Excel works great for partnership accounting. You can set up a column for each partner to track their allocation. So that's what I've done here. Let's see. Requirement A, prepare a schedule to allocate partnership income if it's 217000 Part B will want us to do this again, but they'll change the partnership income. So it would speed things up if we make this an Excel spreadsheet and we use variables. So let's focus just on doing part A. It says partnership income is 217. So instead of making that a fixed number, I'll make it a variable up in row 5. In the grayish box in the middle, it tells me each partner's average capital investment. So I'm going to put that on the spreadsheet as well over in column B. And finally, it tells me that they want to use an interest rate of 10%. So I can make that a variable so that if it changes in some future year, I wouldn't have to do the, redo the entire spreadsheet. I could just change that one item. So I've got my 10% number filled in. So starting on row 17, I've got a column set up for each of the three partners, and it's always a good idea to add a fourth column to total up. That way you can double check that you don't skip anything. Step one, each person is getting a salary. So I filled in each of the salaries that was given in the problem, and now I want to total that up. Using Excel's summation feature makes it pretty easy. Let's 
So, so far, out of an income of 217, I've already allocated 127. Let's move to step two. Step two is each partner gets interest based on their average capital investment during the year. They get compensated 10%. So for example, for Johnson, I can take Johnson's capital balance, average capital balance, that's cell B6. and multiply it by the interest rate of B9. And that means Johnson will also get added to his or her capital account, 18,600. And I want to do the same for the next two partners. So Lane is Kane. Let's fix that. Clients don't like it when you get their names wrong. Kane gets B7 times B9, and Lehman gets B8 times B9. And again, I want to total that up. So the total of that row is 54,000. So looking at the total column so far, I've already had an income of 217. I've allocated 127,000, calling it salary another 54.4 calling it interest. Is there any residual? Yes, there's still some left over. Let's figure out how much. So B5 minus H18 minus H19. So there's still 35,600 left to allocate. So we can call that the residual. And what part of that is Johnson supposed to get? Johnson is supposed to get 4 tenths, so that's 40% times the residual, which is in cell H20. So Johnson will get 14,240 of the residual. Kane gets half the residual, so times H20. And finally, Lehman only gets 10% of the residual, 0 0.1 times H20. Now I need a separate summation to uh, add that up. I'm going to trust that it's right. So I can now draw lines, pretty this up a little bit. Now I'll total up each individual person's allocation. So Johnson gets allocated 74,840. Kane, 80,300. Lehman, 61,860. Let's total up that row, and it should match the income from cell B5. So adding across, it does, 217,000. A mistake that some students will make, they'll get to that residual row, and they'll want to do the entire 217 on that row in addition to salary and interest, and that is incorrect. You can't allocate any more or less than the partnership's income. The partnership's income in part A is 217, you have to allocate exactly that amount among the three partners in total. No more, no less. So in this simple example, the first row salary, maybe the partners agreed that some have more skill than other, maybe some work longer hours. So they came up with numbers to start with that somehow Lehman gets 50,000, Kane only 35. Interest. Why use something like interest to share profits and losses? Well, every business needs capital to run on. So you want to encourage the partners to leave their personal wealth inside the business. Well, every dollar they have in the business, that's a dollar they don't have invested somewhere else. So to reward them for putting capital in the business, you, in a sense, allocate interest rate. That way, any partner who thinks, I'm going to withdraw my money, they can, but they're giving up a chance to get that 10% return on their each dollar, which is a pretty good return. And then finally, the residual is not split equally. Somehow among the three of them, they've decided that uh, Kane should get the biggest amount of anything left over. Notice anything left over, the residual could be a profit or a loss. Let's move to part B. Part B says repeat part A, but now assume the partnership's income is only 112,000. Well, here's the benefit of using Excel is I don't have to redo the whole schedule. I just have to go to cell B5 and change that one number. So instead of 217, I put in one 
12. And look what that did. It made the residual a negative 69,400, right? We still allocate the salaries in full. We still do the interest in full because that's what step four said. Provisions are fully implemented. But because that goes over the partnership income, it turned the partnership income into a negative 69,400 residual. And we allocate that residual, that residue, that leftover among the partners exactly how they told us to in step three. Finally, part C. Suppose Johnson, as managing partner, is entitled to a bonus of 15% of the profits after the bonus, but before allocating any other provisions. And go back to assuming partnership income is 217. Okay, so I've gone back and changed income in cell B5 to be 217. That's made the schedule go back to its original amount. Part C wants you to think about, without redoing the entire schedule, what is the effect of the bonus on the net allocation to Johnson and the other partners? Well, there will be no effect on the row for salary and no effect on the row for interest, but it will change the residual because for every dollar of income we allocate to Johnson as a bonus, that's one less dollar of residual income. So what we need to do is figure out how much bonus is Johnson getting? You might make the mistake of thinking, oh, it's 217 times 0.15, but that's incorrect because this bonus is 15% of the profit after you deduct the bonus. So you have to take 217 minus the bonus, then 15% of that, and that's the bonus. Sounds circular. It becomes an algebra problem. So if you haven't done algebra since high school, this might take you an extra minute, but with a couple of minutes of practice, this will all come back to you. So let's think this through. The bonus is 15% of the income minus the bonus. Well, we know what the income is, so let's fill that in. The bonus is equal to 0.15 of 217,000 minus the bonus. We know from our algebra knowledge that we can multiply 0.15 through the parenthetical. So the bonus is equal to what's 217,000 times 0.15? That's 32,550 minus 0.15 bonus. All right, I need to get the bonus by itself on the left side. So what I can do is add 0.15 bonus to each side. So the bonus that's already on the left side is a one plus another 1.5 is equal to 32,550. How do I get the bonus by itself? Well, now I can divide each side by 1.15. 32,550 divided by 1.15 will give me Johnson's bonus. And with a little rounding, I get 28,304. Now you can check your work by seeing if that works. So the original income was 217. So if I take out 28,304, I would get that number. And if I multiply it by 0 0.15, I get 28,304. So that gives me confidence that I got the right number. Okay, I come back to my spreadsheet. I'm gonna fill in Johnson's bonus, 28,304. I need to uh, fill that in as a total though. Okay, you can see what was the effect of Johnson's bonus. It reduced the residual by 28,304. So the residual this time is much smaller than it was in part A. It's still a positive residual and it still gets allocated 40% to Johnson, 50% to Kane, 10% to Lehman. Okay, there are several problems like this in the book. I suggest that you do as many of these as necessary until you are confident that you could correctly allocate a partnership's income. And just remember, for this, all you have to do is follow exactly what they tell you to do. It laid out the steps in one through four. You don't have to be creative. Just follow what they tell you and you'll be fine.